because we are a nation under God, then we're able to worship the Lord God. We're able to do mission trips. We are able to do vacation Bible school. This morning, we're looking at what I call a great commission prayer tradition. You know the great commission, which is to go into all of the world, teaching, preaching, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, which is the corollary to that great commission, is about we will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon us, and we will be witnesses beginning in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. That was not just for the apostles and the disciples and the first century church. That is for Chunky Baptist Church, which is why we are celebrating that today. July is a month of mission and ministry. And there are two big opportunities, as we've already seen this morning. We have the long-anticipated street reach, urban missions, urban ministry. And then, later in July, we also have Vacation Bible School. Both are outreach. It is about sowing seed. It is about cultivating that soil. It is about watering the seed that has been planted, and it is entrusting it and ourselves to the care of Almighty God, who and only who will give the increase. The opportunity for you and adults and all of us to join with Jesus in his work. Paul called the Colossian church uh, to pray earnestly for mission and ministry in his day. Christians today are called to pray earnestly for mission and ministry. And I challenge you as a church, as well as challenging myself, to pray particularly with the street reach coming up and for vacation Bible school, to pray earnestly and fervently for mission and ministry. The Bible says in John 14, 12, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father. And John 15, 16 is like unto it. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. As we think about that planting and watering, as we think about praying, as we think about commissioning the team, as we think about consecrating ourselves to the task, we're expecting God to do some amazing things. Now, I don't know what he's going to do. I wish I could tell you, well, God's going to do these three things. He may do a lot more than that. Whatever he chooses to do, it will be great. The Bible also reminds us, but I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great and effective door has opened to me there are many adversaries, 1 Corinthians 16, 8 and 9. We have adversaries as we are planning for street reach. I bet you, who? who's against street reach? Tell me who there are. I can one. No, not necessarily that. But the devil doesn't want us to go. He doesn't want us to share the gospel. He doesn't want us to live the gospel. And he does not want this church to pray. And so there are always going to be distractions. We have an amazing opportunity to be on mission and work with God. Yes, boots on the ground going to Memphis, but also boots on the ground praying this week. But there are many adversaries. Make no mistake about it. The heat will be one. I'm sure there will be other things that will pop up that will easily distract if we're not prayed up. So yes, we need to be praying earnestly for mission. And ministry. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God gives the increase. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7. So think about that great commission, prayer commission. 
It's a challenge to the team. It's a challenge to the, to the Vacation Bible School team. And it's a challenge to the church. Why should we and how should we pray earnestly for mission and ministry? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Galatians in the New Testament. I will be, no, not Galatians, my bad, I looked at it wrong. Turn with me to Colossians, thank you. Colossians, I'll be in Colossians chapter 4, those first few verses. Colossians chapter 4, as Paul asks for prayer. As we think about the Great Commission, prayer commission for this church, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. Continue earnestly in prayer. It's not that we're just going to start praying. We already have been praying, and we are continuing that. Now, if you have not been praying, today's a good day to start. And why not keep it on uh, through the rest of this uh, month? Not just June, but I'm talking about July as well. Praying earnestly for mission and ministry is a continuous effort. Continue earnestly. The, continue, the continuous effort is steadfast. Uh, in the language of the, of the New Testament, it means to attend to constantly staying in a fixed direction. Kind of like in an airplane. I have flown some. Uh, you have autopilot. And what I understand of autopilot, when the autopilot is engaged, it will continue on with altitude and course heading until it is changed. Sometimes I wish our vehicles were smart enough they could drive themselves and put it on autopilot and say, okay, take me to Walmart and I just sit back and enjoy it. I don't know if we're ready for that yet or not, but the day may come. But autopilot, well, in a sense, we spiritually on autopilot in that we are in a fixed, steady position of prayer, but not on autopilot where we zoom, uh, zoom out and zone out or any other uh, disconnect, but rather uh, as we're intently focused on praying, and particularly for this prayer emphasis, uh, praying for the street reach team and praying for vacation Bible school, steady and steadfast. The Colossian church were to make prayer their vital mainstay every day of their spiritual life. Therefore, that word, steadfast. But there's another word, very similar, and that is the continuous effort is steady on. The Bible speaks for itself. Acts chapter 1, verse 14, with one accord, they all continued in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Ephesians 6, 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times with every kind of prayer and petition. To this end, stay alert with all perseverance. That word means to keep on, keeping on, you know, steady on. In your prayers for all the saints. Pray earnestly for our mission and ministry is a continuous effort. So let's apply that to us this morning. Chunky Ballot. Try it again. Chunky Baptist, I challenge you to pray for this team, to pray for the members of this team. We will have, we will make sure that we have the names uh, printed and available for you of the team, the adults, the youth, everybody that's going. Pray for this team each day of the mission trip. Do like Charles Spurgeon, morning and evening. When you first wake up, pray. When you go to bed, pray. Because anything great will be accomplished by prayer or will not be accomplished at all. Pray during the Vacation Bible School Week each night of VBS. Pray each night. If we have a list to be able to pray over, I will make sure you have it. If not, then we'll just pray the blanket prayer. But let us be the praying church that is praying continuously with these two big efforts that we want to see, oh God, be glorified we want to see fruit in the basket. We want to be involved in work that will produce fruit that will remain. It's a continuous effort individually. It's a continuous effort collectively. And by doing so, you are a part of the mission team. Now, I know some of you will be participating in VBS. I get it. And I thank you for your service. Some of you will not. And that's okay. I understand that too. The one thing we all can do is to pray continuously on that. Let us commit then the team and consecrate ourselves to this task. 
Let us pray over and pray for the difficult requests, not just the easy ones. Let's trust God for the big things because we serve a big God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Epaphras was one of the people from Colossae who is mentioned by Paul, somebody that they would have understood. He was a prayer warrior. Dr. Max Anders says, and I quote, Epaphras was the prayer warrior from Colossae. He was the man responsible for bringing the gospel to the Colossians. For Epaphras, prayer was not a game. It was a battle. He prayed continually, fervently, and purposefully for their spiritual maturity. Praying earnestly for mission and ministry is a continuous effort. And you and I can be modern day Epaphrases. But number two, as you look at verse two of Colossians chapter four, praying earnestly for missions and ministry is a concerted effort. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it. That concerted effort is attentive. In the language of the New Testament, the word vigilance means to be awake and responsibly watchful. Strict attention. It's like the storm chaser who also can function as a tornado spot. When you're out on the field, so to speak, and you're, you're observing the storm cloud and, and you recognize the wall cloud and, and knowing that it can very easily produce a, a funnel at any time and you have communications gear, yeah, many of the storm chasers who are in a position to do that, not, I won't say everyone, I'm talking about the ones who are professional and those who take it very seriously, yeah, they do try to alert the local authorities. They do try to alert uh, the weather station so that they can get the warning out because with advanced warning, people can take shelter. Lives depend on it. So yes, when you're a storm chaser, you have to be vigilant. Well, the same here. Paying watchful, strict attention. But vigilance also means taking care of business. The Christians at Colossae, they took care of business. And their business was giving close attention to the frequency and to the fervency of their prayer lives. See, they couldn't control the persecution that was going on around them or the problems that they had in their life. No more than you and I can control what happens in our life. Sometimes we like to think we have control of things, and maybe we do on some things. But a lot of things, we, we're along for the ride. Sometimes I'm just, hey, put your hands up. Let's ride more fun that way. Because the only thing that you have control over, really, is your prayer life and attitude towards everything else. And the Colossian church was taking care of business. Chunky Baptists can take care of business. And that's an amazing thing. It's a, an attentive, concerted effort. It's also this concerted effort is active. The, the Colossians were not passive. They didn't just pray as they thought about it. They didn't, oh, by the way, you need to pray. In other words, when all else fails, then pray. That's terrible theology. Before anything is accomplished, pray. As everything is underway and is being executed or, in, or employed or deployed, whichever word you want to use, pray. And then when it's over and said and done, Pray and pray any other time in between because you can never have too much prayer. In fact, the Colossians would have gathered uh, both as a church family, as a congregation, assembling together, much like we have assembled together this morning. Other times they would have gathered as small groups in their homes. It might have been a few families. It might have been uh, some other places. And they would have prayed as Paul had urged them to pray earnestly with vigilance. They were making a concerted effort. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. If you read the rest of that verse, God supplies the need. It's an amazing opportunity that we have that we are in, in some way coming alongside God as He is working in our midst. And as we begin to pray, He takes the blinders off and we see where He's at work. And then we begin to make the adjustments to join Him in that work. It's a concerted effort on all of our parts. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18, Pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. So yes, 
We will praise God for the 105 degree heat. Not my favorite, but we will praise Him and thank Him for it. We will pray and thank Him for the long uh, drive as we uh, are riding to and from. We will thank Him for the, for the difficult people that we will encounter. We will thank Him for the people who are ready to hear the Word of God. And during vacation Bible school, we will thank Him for every up and we will thank Him for every down and we will thank Him for everything in between because our God is a big God and He's worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. So let us pray as a concerted effort. Think of it like this. We go to concerts where people sing. I've been to concerts, Christian and secular. Went to a country concert one time, Alabama, I think it was. Um, we also go to con other types of concerts where people are not necessarily singing, but sometimes they're getting up and they're speaking. Uh, we like to enjoy those type of situations, uh, sometimes at a convention or some other type of assembly. But think about like this, when we gather together and we are praying, especially in these two challenges for street reach and vacation Bible school, the two biggest emphasis that we'll have, to my knowledge, right this moment, this summer, that doesn't mean there won't be others, but those two coming up, it is a concert of prayer and praise to God. And, and the Lord Jesus inhabits the praises and the prayers of His people. In the Old Testament, they had in both the tabernacle, that's the big tent, also in the te temple, that was the brick and mortar version of the tabernacle, the worship tent. They had the golden altar of incense where they're burning spices continually, representing the prayers of the people of God, the praises of the people of God, a sweet-smelling incense. When we pray, Humbly, and we pray with holy hearts and holy hands, lifted up to Jesus Christ. That is a sweet smelling incense. God in, inhabits and delights in the prayers and the praises of his people. And when God's people pray, things happen. What an amazing opportunity that we have as we apply that today. We are making a concerted and collaborative effort in this great commission, prayer commission. As we commission the team, as we also commission and uh, commit our vacation Bible school team, and we consecrate ourselves to this task, you and I can be attentive and active in our prayer life, especially in these special emphasis times coming up. What great things God might do through you. Not just through the team going or, or those who will be involved with the uh, children and other young ones that will be in VBS, but what God might do through you in your prayer time. See, prayer not only changes things, it changes the person who prays. Let us concentrate our prayers. Combine our effort. See, Joshua led the Israelites in the battle against the Amalekites. The Amalekites, simply put, were a bad group of people. They did not like the Hebrews. They wanted to annihilate them. Sometimes some battles simply have to be fought. Sometimes you cannot walk away. Sometimes you have no other, uh, other way to turn. So by the grace of God, he led the Israelite army, such as it was, to battle. Moses, Aaron, and Hur, or Hur, I prefer Hur, uh, those three spiritual leaders, they go up to the hill, top of the hill. They have the high ground. Some of you will get that. And as they're on the high ground, they're observing the battle. And Moses has the rod of God, the staff of God in his hand. As he holds it up, Joshua's winning. But when he gets tired and begins to let it down, Amalekites begin to win. So Aaron and Hur are attentive to the situation. They are responsive to the situation. They take act. They're not, you know, wow, somebody ought to do something to help Moses. No, they saw the need. They met the need. They got the rock. They put it down there. And they had Moses sit down on the rock. And on one side, Aaron holds up his hand. On the other side, Hur holds up his hand. And they help him until the sun goes down and the battle is won. It was a concerted effort. You and I are that prayer team. Praying for street reach and praying for vacation Bible school. Prayer moves the hands that moves the world, Charles Spurgeon. But not only is praying earnestly for mission and ministry a continuous effort or a concerted effort, it is a consecrated effort. Look with me again. 
Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. See, it's an effort of gratitude. Prayer, that's talking to God, but it's also listening to God. Prayer is itself an act of faith. It is an act of worship. Prayer is holy work for a holy people, and you and I are called to be holy as our Heavenly Father has been is holy because through the Holy Spirit within us as we are born again and saved, He is in the process of making us more like Jesus. Gratitude glorifies God. He manifests His presence, His power, His provision. That's why we, are, we give gratitude to God far and in the need because He's sovereign. He's not an absent God. He is a present tense God. Gratitude to God over the need. He glorifies Himself by supplying whatever we lack. Providing what we need, as much as we need, whenever we need it. We do not lack any good thing with God. It's also a concerted effort in glorifying. All that we are, all that we think, all that we feel, all that we say, all that we do is meant to glorify God. Prayer prepares the head, the heart, and the hand to recognize the Lord, to receive what He has, and to respond as He directs. So in the spirit of the psalm, Psalm 116, verses 12, 13, and 17, what shall I render to the Lord for all His benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Our continuous concerted prayer effort is that concert of praise. And as the Lord delights in the prayers and praises of His people, then let us bathe the team in prayer. Let us bathe the VBS in prayer. And, as, and let us bathe ourselves in prayer. And as we are so bathing these in prayer, let us bathe our prayers in praise and gratitude to Almighty God. That's what Samuel did, the prophet and priest, who even after Israel had chosen a human king over a spiritual king, he said, I will not sin against God by ceasing to pray for you and teaching you the right way. It was consecrated work. But praying earnestly for mission and ministry is a concentrated effort in verses 3 and 4 of Colossians chapter 4. And meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. As we have shared earlier this morning, concentrated effort for open doors. That means opportunity. And praise God that Jesus is Lord of open doors. And doors that He opens will not be shut until He deems it necessary or ready. The Bible says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1. But also it's concentrated effort for open hearts and open minds. Paul desired to communicate the gospel plain and simple. It's not enough for Paul or me or anybody else to get up there and preach the word, teach the word, any other aspect. Those things are important. Not throwing that out the window, but that's only half of the battle. The other half of the battle is pray and pray earnestly for people to hear the word with understanding and to respond to the Word of God. As we pray for street reach, as we pray for vacation Bible school, remember that prayer primes the pump of faith and the action that flows. So let us pray, then concentrating on equipping, on empowering, on excelling. Concentrate our prayers on availability, approachability, accessibility, for every divine appointment. Because that's what Paul was calling the Colossian church to do. It really is a great commission, prayer commission. And therefore, ours going forward is a continuous, concerted, 
consecrated and concentrated effort of prayer and praise, which brings us then to the most important moment, is your response to false commission. As our worship leaders come, and if we stand to sing our hymn of invitation, you come as the Lord might be leading you to come because the Bible always calls for a decision. So I call you to a decision this morning.